Welcome to the Young Filmmakers Project. I'm Cassidad. We're here at the Vancouver School of Arts and Academics, where my classmates and I are making movies. Every high school and most middle schools have video production programs where students learn how to shoot and edit video, write scripts, build graphics, and do live shows. While they do all that, they're also building teamwork skills like communication, problem solving, and more. These programs are a part of the district's Career and Technical Education Department. Our theme today is How To. We have movies made by students that teach the viewer. Our first film is for those interested in ceramics. Take a look. Some materials you will need to help the process or add design are a potter's rib, needle tool, a sponge, a scraper, and some water. So the first step to making your ceramic pot is beginning to throw the clay. You want to round out the clay slightly first, then place the clay in the center of the wheel. There will be an on button on the side of the station and a foot press to spin it. A general rule is to keep the clay moist so it will be easier to shape with your hands and move it into a cone or dome shape. To make a bowl in particular, you will want to create a hole and slowly pull backwards to create an opening. Move slowly and as the wheel is spinning, the opening will become wider. The next step is pulling. Grab your sponge and gently press at the base of your pot. Slowly pull upwards and you will see that the clay will spread to create a taller shape. As you are opening and pulling, something you want to keep in mind is the thickness of the clay. One fourth of an inch is recommended. You can occasionally scrape the base of the pot with a scraper to clean up your area. And at this point, you can create additional details. Here we are using red dye to add more decorative elements. Then you can wire the base to remove the pot from the wheel. Other decorative elements you can use is taking the needle tool and creating indented designs along the side of your pot. This pot in particular can skip to firing since we have added our elements to it, but if you are choosing to glaze, the piece of ceramic will be fired once, then glazed, and fired to the kiln for a second time. To protect the glaze from getting to the bottom of the ceramic while in the kiln, you need to underglaze it. At this point, the pot is prepped and can be dunked into the glaze of choice. To cover the inside of the pot, pour the glaze in and slowly rotate the pot to cover the edges. You can also add more decorative elements in the glaze process in many ways. Here we are creating a splatter effect. In the kiln, the pot will be heated to 1950 degrees Fahrenheit and will seal the glaze. And that's how you create your first ceramic piece. I'm joined now by the team that made this video. Why don't you introduce yourselves? I'm Annika Cook. I'm Natalie McNulty. So the first question that we have is, why did you guys decide to make this film? Um, well, we were trying to think of a good topic, and we knew that we had a friend who is really into pottery and has gotten really skilled at it. So we thought it would be a really neat video to make that was really pretty and just really interesting. It's a topic no one really knows about. <laughs> 
Um, well, our prompt was, it was a how-to project and there were certain requirements that we needed to use. Um, and Alyssa and her pottery just kind of came to mind just because we thought that would be a really, you know, cool idea to film, showcase our school in a really positive way. And she's really talented, so why not use that talent? <laughs> Uh, could you briefly describe what your roles were when it came to the production of this? Um, so we both were doing camera work a lot, and then we made separate edits, and we used a DSLR camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we neither of us <laughs> really wanted to narrate it, so we just got uh, Brooke Cruz, shout out, <laughs> uh, to help us, and she was down to do it. Um, so she helped us a lot on that, but yeah, we did make separate edits, um, so depending on which one you're seeing, it's one of us two editing it. And yeah, we kind of split it pretty 50-50 in terms of filming. It was a pretty easy shoot. Um, in your guys' opinion, how hard is it to teach people a new skill like this? I think that if you phrase it right, people can get it pretty well. Like For this, I think that I would much rather have Alyssa right next to me if I was trying to make a ceramic, but the video is very descriptive and very visual, so mm -hmm. I think it's pretty, I don't know, I think it just depends on what it is. Yeah, it's all in communication, like with whoever you're working with, um, and Alyssa helped us a lot with like the steps, and we, when we did the narration, we made sure to keep the description of each step really clear, so then whoever would follow this would have an idea of what to do. Um, and of course, since it's like a video production, we wanted to make it like very visually pleasing and descriptive as well, because you know, some of us aren't always like just auditory learners. So that MIA format of using visual and audio really helped tell how to make a ceramic pot. <laughs> so, since you guys both worked on filming this project, did you think you learned a lot more about ceramics during this? Oh yeah, like I had no idea, because I, I remember the last time I learned how to make like a pinch pot was in sixth grade. So then like that, and I always was like really interested in like the wheel and the process of like, sp like spinning, and like molding the clay. So it was really cool to watch and really fascinating to learn all the steps because honestly I thought it was a lot easier. <laughs> yeah I don't think we would have made it unless we found the topic like interesting as is and I'm gonna t I'm planning on taking pottery next year so this was like a good little crash course intro to doing that and just making sure I'm doing everything right. As well as working on this project what else did you learn about just filmmaking in general? I learned how to use a DSLR camera which was New for you. Yeah. New for me, yeah, with like the focusing and stuff was really difficult at times, but Natalie helped me out a lot with that. And I feel like I learned how to get different angles when you're filming. It's like really interesting because you don't just want like the same perspective during the entire video. And I really enjoyed filming. It was really fun. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I've done photography before, so I know how to use the DSLR, but I haven't used it with film. And like that, like autofocus, no, you're not going to use that. <laughs> um, and also, she was working at a really fast pace, so it taught me to just be on top of everything and move around when I needed to, um, really capture things from different perspectives, like she said. And yeah, it was really fast paced, but I think it was a good learning experience. Do you think that in the future that you would be making more instructional videos like this? It was a lot more work because you have to develop more of a script for it because you want to also have the audio to go with it. You don't just want to show the steps. So I really enjoyed making this because the steps were really clear to do, but mm -hmm. it's a little bit more work, but I think it's definitely worth it because people enjoy it because you're learning a new skill while mm -hmm. watching. Yeah, it's a really like definitive like layout, I guess. You have it's not like a narrative where you can move things around how you want and it's very clear structure and I like that in some aspects, so I probably would do more, but I also would like to branch out, of course. Thank you guys. Thank you. Our next two selections are also how to films, shot here at VSAA. I hope you're hungry. Today we're going to be making these simple Italian chicken cutlets with cheesy mashed potatoes and a tomato zucchini jumble. 
You can whip this meal up in around 35 to 40 minutes and serve a family-friendly meal full of protein and low on cholesterol. Before we start, let's gather our supplies that we're going to be using. Next, let's get our ingredients prepared. To get started, let's wash and dry all produce. The first step is to prep and season the chicken. To begin, cut the lemon in half and using your zester, zest one half of the lemon. Squeeze the juice from the other half into a large bowl along with the zest, and pat dry the chicken with paper towels and add it to the same bowl as the freshly squeezed lemon juice and zest. Add one and a half teaspoons of Italian seasoning as well as a large drizzle of olive oil and season with some salt and pepper. Next, we're going to start on the mashed potatoes. While the potatoes are cooking, it's time to cook the chicken. Heat a drizzle of olive oil in a large pan on high and add the chicken. Make sure it's fully coated in the marinade. Add the rest of the Italian seasoning and cook until the meat is no longer pink. This should take about three to five minutes per side. While the potatoes are still cooking, we're going to begin prepping and cooking the veggies. Once they are done cooking, drain the potatoes and return the pot to low heat and add one tablespoon of butter and the scallion whites. Put the potatoes in a large bowl and stir in the cheese and season with plenty of salt and pepper. Finally, place everything on a plate and your meal is ready to serve. My name is Sofia Sukovic. Welcome to my kitchen where today we are making desserts. This delicious dessert, you will need double stuffed Oreos, a block of cream cheese, and some candy melts. Today I'm using red and white, but you can use whatever you want. You will be needing um, Oreos and a food processor. So just fill it up as much as you can. So you would pour the Oreo crumbs into a bowl. And then you have our crushed Oreos. Now that you have your Oreo dust, we can put the steam inside. Okay, so, and then we're gonna slowly add some cream cheese. So I'm gonna start with half the cream cheese of Oreos. Now we're just gonna mix it in. It's really easy to use your hands, it's easier and quicker. So we're gonna add some more uh, in case. Just slowly add as much as you need in. Depends on how much Oreos you have. It should be a little paste. Oh. So we've cleaned up a little bit and now that we have our Oreo paste, we have already set a pan and some parchment paper. So we're just gonna make the Oreo paste into like one inch balls. And just do that for a while. Okay, now that we have the Oreo balls done, we're gonna stick them in the freezer for about 15 minutes. While those are in the freezer, we're going to be melting some of these white chocolate little candy melts. We're just gonna pour them in here. Okay, put this in the white and mix it when it starts melting a little bit. Now that the 
chocolate balls are out of the freezer. We are going to dip them in the white chocolate that we heated up. Take away the balls. Pop it in there. For our last step, we are, we are going to be melting the red candy melts in the microwave and we're we'll drizzling them onto the Oreo truffles. This is our end result. Um, as you can see, we add some extra decorations on with the candy melt. Yeah, this is what the finished project is. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna see what it tastes like. Well, absolutely not bad. <laughs> Thank you for watching me scare myself and make these Oreo truffles. They're actually very easy to make, which is actually really good because I can't do anything ever. So I'm going to go eat these because they're very good. Okay, bye. <laughs>
stretching, yeah. we're ready to become karate masters. Yeah. Next, to become an ultra karate master, you have to work on your strength training. So let's get into some pull-ups. Dude, zoom back up! Dude! Ah! Next, to get extra strong, we're gonna be doing some push-ups. See, for you beginners, you're probably gonna be doing, you know, two-handed push-ups, and that's fine. You'll get strong like me too. Let's get into some push-ups. Wow! Oh, oh. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, two, what, what? No! <laughs> Now you saw that I mastered the no-handed push-up. I just used sheer power of will to levitate my body off the ground. Okay, next, we're gonna go straight into some cardio. So let's get on doing cardio! Wow! <laughs> Forget cardio, if you're strong enough, you don't have to run from anything. So we're gonna skip cardio. The next step is striking. I will show you how to break a watermelon with just your fist. Bring it in. Ah! Ah! <laughs> and now you've become an ultimate karate champion. Are you new to Premiere Pro? Do you have an amazing video but don't know how to export? Well, I'm here to help. Hi, I'm Hugh Honey, and I'm going to show you how to export using Premiere Pro. The first thing that you're going to want to do is just to double check and make sure that both your video and your audio are the way that you want them to be. Next, you're going to want to go into File, Export, and media. A faster way to do this is to simply press Command M. Once you see this screen, you're going to want to check to make sure that the format is an H.264. A very common mistake that many people do is choose H.264 Blu-ray, so be sure to check that you did it right. Next, you're going to want to choose your output name. In our case, it is test video but you can name it whatever you want. Next, under source range, make sure that you have entire sequence. Once you've done all three of these things correctly, all you have to click is export. Two-day stack. This is Ben. He can't die stack. This is Preston. He can die stack. The first thing you have to get down is the motion. It's just a back and forth motion with the cup and your hand slightly above the table. A lot of people think that it's a vertical motion, like you keep the cup straight, up and down. But actually it's more horizontal, so you can actually pick up the dice and get them the stack straight up in the cup.
just about out of time. Remember that you can always see past episodes of the show on the District YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash TV. Just look for the Young Filmmakers playlist. Thanks again for watching the Young Filmmakers Project. Until next time, I'm Cassidad.